you want to be trading 27 and 20, 24 and 27 and a half. So now is the time to be buying, not to be selling. And you don't want to be trading after 27. You want to watch this. You want to watch, you know, that's the movie. That's the, that is the movie you want to be in. There are strangling U, U.S. supplies. So that is the, the way they try to, they try to discourage people to own gold and silver simply by making them unavailable. I'm telling you the premium is going to go up and it's going to go berserk because. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining Yankee Stacking for part two of my interview with John Lee of Silver Elephant. <laughs> um, we're at the terminal stage, make no mistake about it. Mm. But however, I would say this though, um, the doom and gloom is being forecasted by the likes of Doug Casey's and, 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 and whatnot. Even James Turk, who I was a stupid student of for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, and why has it happened, right? Because every, everything you talked about is really been going on. U.S. has been deader for the last 20, 30 years. And why hasn't it, things blown up uh, where it should have a long time ago? Part of it is the management of the gold and silver to create the illusion that everything is sort of still resemble a bit of normalcy. And, and part it's of it charade. is, you know, heavy talk with Clinton era, the heavy strong dollar policy and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but part the third part of it is the supply of dollar. I wouldn't necessarily measure that in terms of uh, US uh, as, as a percentage of the US uh, GDP, which will be then, you know, 20%. Uh, but I would look at more as in terms of the global GDP, given the dollar is really the de facto reserve, it's the global currency and dollar penetration is more than ever. Right. The euro has never taken off as, as a reserve, as, as a global commerce. However, the, the, U the global GDP is at around 80 trillion. So if you were to be printing around 10 trillion, it's, it's greater than five. I mean, historically, when, when, you, when the deficit is more than 5%, the, you know, the currency is in danger. So U.S. is already at around 20%. Um, but on a global basis, it's, it's less than 10%. So in that, in that regard, there may be, you know, we may be a little bit surprised as to how far the can could be kicked down the road, how far the <laughs> mileage. So I don't think the dollar's demise is imminent because right. That was spelled the doom of the entire fiat system. Right. So, John, um, yes, we are absolutely the cleanest shirt in the laundry when you look at it from one perspective but yes. we are also the the largest debtor nation <laughs> in the world we make nothing relatively speaking we yeah. we are abusing our dollar reserve currency status in so many ways and i hear you it's been going on a long time that can keeps being kicked up the mountain i like to say At some point it's going to end yeah, I don't know when that point is. And now let me let me share another interesting thought, right? Like the biggest financial crisis I saw was 1997 and 2009, sure. but I'm 47. Yep. So for an average 30 year old, um, they're, when they're 20, what they saw was what? 2009 financial crisis, right? So right. I'm just saying the average portfolio manager and a lot of the public, I mean, even portfolio manager, half of them really had, only half of them probably endure some sort of real crisis. But an average public, somebody who's in their 30s or early 20s, they've never seen anything. They've never ever seen anything. So right. I'm just saying this. The, 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 well, They're the, in for a shock, the, John. I'm 55. Yes. I will be soon. <laughs> I, I remember as a kid the 70s and stagflation and the misery index. Yes. People don't understand what it would be like to go through out of control inflation while people are losing their jobs. Do you realize that yes. we are still still seeing record levels of unemployment claims unseen even during the height of the global financial crisis we're, we're papering it over with so-called stimulus growth right right Over welfare and it, i don't care if you don't want to call it ubi it, it it is ubi we are absolutely subsidizing and printing all of what we need monetizing it in order to give a a facade that we have a real economy that is growing, that it's recovered from what we've gone through, and it's not. And I think at some point, I believe in my lifetime, the emperor is going to be shown to have no clothes. The Fed is going to be exposed. We are not going to be able to stop inflation. And because of the difference between now and the 1970s, when we didn't have so much debt at all, we are going to be exposed. And when that happens, it's going to happen 
fast, John. My friend is from Brazil, yeah. and I was there in 97, and I was oh, there in yeah. Asia in my financial crisis. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys are oblivious, obl like oblivious to what's happening, and <laughs> people literally were uh, depositing and have U.S. dollar bank balance uh, in their accounts. So what happened was in these countries is – the, the day before they will freeze your account and the day and then during the overnight they will reset the exchange rate oh. okay say argentine sure. used to be parity yeah. to the dollar yeah. then we'll say five argentine to a dollar and they will force convert your dollar holding in your bank account in argentina to the Ar to Argent to 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 argentine pesos and then they will then open the bank account the next day mm. so i think before everything goes in smoke you could be looking at something quite similar or in venezuela where they were literally just chop a zero or chop two zeros of the currency and print out a new note. Oh, we are at the terminal stage. Interest yeah. rates not going to go up. Yeah. Um, on the UBI, yeah, my thoughts on UBI. Yeah. UBI is like um, it's like Medicare, okay, or it's like Obamacare. Once you give to these people, you're not you cannot take it back. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, it's like President Nixon back in the Democrats in the seventies. Um, it was before my time, but it's through my reading and, you know, it was very cleverly designed to, um, it's a caste system and these people that receive benefits are never going to get out of their caste system. So they knew exactly what their, what their device, the, the device, they know the purpose and, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, short-term fix, but it's long-term pain. And it's a very, very unfortunate. Um, and, uh, basically you have an erosion of the middle class. And you're becoming a two tier system. Yep. People yep. who have who have and people who have not, mm. and that's just the way it is. And that pace is is accelerating rapidly. John, I, there seems to be a growing anti crypto sentiment from what I've read. Different statements from Jerome Powell, even Janet Yellen, it just seems to be like they see it more as like, okay, we, we got to do something about that. Um, do you see central banks? Um, you know, the Fed really cracking down with regulations, with maybe the push of uh, CBDCs, central bank digital currencies in the near future? Yes, central bank currency and, and cryptos are uh, kind of two different animals. The reason yeah. the yeah. central banks want to have uh, used their own stable coin is, is they can track you much better. Because right now you can still, if you open a bank, I highly encourage uh, you folks to watch my recent interview with uh, Reddit as I talked about it. Mm. Um, but however, the cryptocurrencies, um, you, just like the Fed, like the Yellens and Jay Power and whatnot, and all the politicians, you don't pay you don't pay service to their lips. You pay service to their action. <laughs> so right now, there's really not any concerted effort towards reining in the crypto, which even though they are fully capable of doing fully capable of doing that, because United States citizens, by and large, are law-abiding people. So all you, I mean, all you need to do is 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 tell them it is outlawed, right? And you're going to see a big correction. The reason they're not doing that to rein in the cryptos, as I shared with the Reddit crowd, is, hey, look, this currency actually, crypto actually serve a good purpose to uh, to uh, to stash away your maybe alternative or yield gotten gains. And I would not be surprised if some of the higher ups are active participants. <laughs> it's outside of the banking system. Right, yeah, and the yeah. the number of uh, safe havens are 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 dwindling. Mm. You cannot go to Panama. You cannot go to Switzerland. Mm. You cannot, as a U.S. citizen, you cannot open a bank account in Asia, mm. because once you do, then the Asian banks are open to IRS and U.S. Um, subpoena. Mm. So they, so I mean, you know, if you if they were to accept one U.S. citizen, that literally spoiled the pot of all their other people, right? Yeah, I so. Get it. Yep. So like the, the, the investment choice, the, the, the safe handed choices are limited, especially for U.S. citizens. I think my gut feel is they're paying lip service. There are some very powerful people. Maybe there are active participants. Of I don't know. I'm completely speculating. I'm mm -hmm. not accusing anybody. Right. Um, but uh, at some point in time, the pressure mm -hmm. may be overwhelming, but we don't know. And, and I think just in the crypto themselves, and just really quickly, 70% uh, of the crypto volumes are are actually not from the dollar or fiat currencies are from the stable coins like the Tether and okay. other USDC. Yep. And these have no US dollar backing whatsoever. So I think the, the key to watch out for, for crypto is the ratio of volume between all these other stable coins like the Tether and USDC. Mm -hmm. 
versus the fiats, the dollars and the British pounds and euros. If if you see more fiat uh, start to dominate um, the stable car, car, uh, stable coins in in the volume of cryptos, that will be a good sign for the crypto bulls. Um, but 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 these uh, stable currency, their 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 supply are increasing billions by the week. So I I don't know how it's going to end, but uh, somehow I, I got a feeling it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> no. You mentioned Reddit, uh, your interview with them. Uh, do you think there is a slow? Uh, motion short squeeze going on right now, Wall Street Silver. Do you think that's happening? I certainly think that the uh, I certainly think that the physical demand for silver is making an impact. It's having an impact. Okay. A lot of kinds of guys got dis- discouraged, like your niece or your yep. nephews, yep. because people have a, a certain expectation mm. or. Um, that's not matching with the reality, right? There's the yes. reality factor that's printed on the screen every day. The reason I say that the physical demand is making an impact, not only from the Reddit, but there's a lot of other investors are secretly hoarding silver, uh, welding Dow people. They're, you know, by the thousands and ounces and, and tens of millions of ounces and hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. Um, the reason I say that, because if you compare the action of gold and silver, you can clearly see silver is doing much, much better than gold. I mean, gold is way below its 200-day moving, moving average, average. Yep, where silver right. is is staying above that. So that's a very, very good sign. The other positive sign is, 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 is that silver is making higher lows. This is why you want to pay attention, not so much on how high it's going, but how low it's making its bottom. So silver, I mean, in July, you see silver at bottom at 14, 15. In, in, in November, you see silver at bottom at 18. Even in early January, you see silver at 21, 22. But now silver, 200-day moving is 24. And I would say that silver is probably going to stay above 200-day moving. As occasionally, you got to smash by the cartels but or cabals, <laughs> whatever you name them. But I think silver is, in my view, going to trend steadily. Uh, over this 24 move, 200 day moving average is is going up and moving up, and the way I look at it is is on the short and medium term is um, because of all the active management, which makes the technical trends so much more um, the relevant. And the key resistance level is 27 and a half. So um, silver never stayed above 27 and a half for extended period of time with heavy volume. If silver managed to, to overcome 27 and a half, that's a very clear signal of just the basic demand over supply. Physical, physical, okay. physical not just yep. paper smashing. Right. So that could be either from the Reddit or from the invisible hands, or for some reason, maybe the, the supply, meaning the cartels no longer have enough uh, supply to, to, to manage the market. Oh, or maybe there is some technical retreat, just like they did back in July of last year. And so if you, if you see last July as a guide, once 27 and a half is overcome, you could see the market. And this is I've been out there uh, saying this. You can see the market quickly go over 30 and within a, within a month can easily go over 50. Keep in mind also, if you ask how high silver can go, in the last uh, watershed, uh, silver went from 15 to 50 in less than a year. Mm-hmm. And that was because Eric's brought and some Asian investors hoarding the physicals. So in, this time around, the money aggregate is multiple times back in 2011. So chances for that to happen again is pretty good. Mm-hmm. When, I don't know. But what do you want to watch out and would they make themselves known? Maybe. And maybe when they make themselves known, it's the time they're ready to cash out. So you want to be careful about right, it. Right. Um, you want to align with the invisible hands. So invisible hands are telling you right now, 27 and a half is the critical level. But before that, uh, for the discouraged, you want to be trading 27 and 20, 24 and 27 and a half. So now is the time to be buying, not to be selling. And at 27 and a half for the traders, you, you want to be selling. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as the market overcome 27 and a half, you, for me anyway, outside of my real estate, I'll be going all in. Um, wow. And then you and you don't want to be trading after twenty seven. You want to watch the. Sh- you want to watch, you know. That's the movie. That's the that is the movie you want to be in. That's um, the movie you want. to Yeah, be that is the movie you want. And you want to. <laughs> <laughs> that is the advice I'm trying to give to my nephew and others. And I keep telling people on the channel, this is this is on sale right now. This is what you need to be buying. Too many people are buying high and selling low. They're getting they're getting it backwards, John. And the, but one of the challenges with this stuff, John, 
yes. is the premium. I mean, it's it is expensive, and I think that's just a, 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 a supply and demand, you know, reality that we're seeing such high prices to buy the physical stuff when when the spot price is so low. Very frustrating sometimes for people to see that. Um, yes. So as a stacker, if, you know, our mantra is: if you don't hold it, you don't own it. So. You know, right. we love to have this stuff in our vaults. We got to have it physically in our hands. We don't want counterparty risk. We want it in our hands. But a lot of people, they've got, you know, 401ks, they've got IRAs. They have, they have limited ability to be able to buy the physical. So one of the things I've been telling people is this is also a great opportunity to buy into good paper assets like Precious Metals Mining Companies. And I do want to give you some time to talk to us about Silver Elephant. You got to tell yes. us about your mining company. Just spend a few minutes, please bring us up to speed. Well, of all, I have, I have 10 ounce bar, 20, I have 5,000 ounce bars. I have all whoa, the different whoa, whoa. coins. I you love the five, maple the best. Wait a minute, you have a I five, love the maple. Wait a minute, you have a 5,000 ounce bar? Yeah, from uh, I started buying back when silver was $9, uh, $9 an ounce. So, uh, but you know what? Okay. Of all, I love the Maples the best. Okay, so you, you uh, It's like a 999. The and, uh, you know, these are the, the most best looking ones. So, uh, <laughs> secondly, you, you, I agree with you. Buy the, go with the physical. If you do buy their ETF, you actually may be doing disservice to silver market because Good point. they – the ETF, first of all, you don't know whether there's silver in there. Secondly, if, if, even if there's silver in there, there'd be a fraction or ownership. Maybe, you know, two people claim the same odds. And then third, you may be doing disservice because that silver may be taken out, being borrowed in land to the commercials. This, this very people that's on the other side of the tray, the smashing the silver market with the silver, with the exact that ounce of silver that you thought you own. Mm -hmm. So you're shooting yourself in the foot by doing, by doing this, buying those ETFs. Now on the premiums, um, the premiums will actually go up. I, I highly recommend coins because these are soothing to look at. Every time I look at my coins, I never, the thought of selling never came to mind, even though I would have made five times my money when silver was 50. I just, right. you know, it's never came to mind. I never sold. Well, I, mean, I have a big garage. <laughs> I never sell anything. I don't have time for that. <laughs> premium is going to go up. A silver price go up. The pre, I mean, it's well established. The premium is going to go up. Mm. And I'll tell you, what I, I will tell you, it's almost a certain what's going to happen is, um, well, you know, the power that be, right? If they discourage people to buy gold and silver as they are right now in managing the market, they certainly don't want to make the headline to make it say, quote unquote, illegal, because that's going to attract people. Why is it illegal, right? And that's people want it more. Right. Or so what? what's the next thing you can do other than be outlaw, outlaw those to make it unavailable to the U.S. Treasury to mint, right? Mm -hmm. So they are, I think it's very clear to me that, they are siphoning the supplies from the refineries to the Cougarans, to the Mint, to the British Mint, to the U.S. Mint. Mm -hmm. So they are siphoning, they are strangling U U.S. supplies. So that is the, the way they try, to, they try to discourage people to own gold and silver, simply by making them unavailable. <laughs> Given that everything is a lot more centralized than before, I mean, look, the Fed can call Facebook to shut your account, shut down your account. Surely they can call all the dealers, right? Say, hey, there's no supply. There's the and all the mints in the United States, private or public or U.S. government owned. Mm -hmm. So if that were to happen, can you imagine the sort of premium that's going to come in, especially on U.S. Treasury, on the U.S. Eagles and Canadian Maples? Get hold of them as, as much as you can. Mm -hmm. I only talk about things that I know. <laughs> I'm telling you the premium is going to go up and it's going to go berserk because, mm -hmm. because before you know, sooner than later, U.S. Treasury is going to stop. U.S. Mint is going to stop altogether. Maybe they will do a token, right? Like, you know, I don't know how, many, how much U.S. Ego they sell, but... Mm -hmm. They are just, they're going to bottleneck it either, you know, for whatever reason. That's the way that discourage U.S. ownership. They cannot outlaw. It, it'd be too crazy. So the way to yeah. do, that, do that is purposely bottlenecking and strangling supplies to the mints. And at that point, you're going to see huge premiums. So 
of all the denominations and whatnot, I highly recommend go with the coins. Just stack the coins. They're beautiful to look at. They are just beautiful. So give us a little bit on Silver Elephant. I really do want to... I want to hear about your mining company because I think there's some 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 uh, opportunities here for my viewers. Silver coins and silver mining investments are physicals and minings are very different. Um, mining uh, coins, you feel good. I look at the coins. I've, yeah, right. One is more speculative. One to give you more th- soothing, right? Right. Um, there's a couple of advantage to mining because I mean, for example. Um, if you were to own the ETFs, mm-hmm. uh, there's a possibility that the government can do uh, early, like we talked about Argentine peso. They can fix the price, mm-hmm. redeem your ETFs or your 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 um, your capital pools, and then they will let the coin. They, they then they will let the 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 uh, the metal prices uh, uh, float. Mm-hmm. So what I mean by that is, if you own like a share of SLV at thirty dollar. They could re- forcefully redeem your SLV at 30 and then let the silver price float the next day oh, at a much higher price. So there's a risk in that. Uh, the, the, the beauty of silver mining company is, well, depending on the jurisdiction, so you want to make sure you're, you're diversified with your silver mining holdings, but you're owning silver in the ground, right? These are, it's, it's, it's the right. next best thing to owning silver physical. Uh, so you, you own silver in the ground and, and depending, on, depending on obviously the type of deposits, and the mining companies will be mining and making money. In particular though, for Silver Elephant, we're an exploration focused company. We create value mm. by making discoveries and by uh, proving that more resources, silver ounces in the ground. Mm-hmm. We don't believe in mining silver right now in exchange for fiat at the current silver price, especially given mining is a depleting process. It's a depleting asset Activity. like mining, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't make sense to be Digging silver and selling at 25, at least to us anyway. <laughs> so, so therefore, we are the early phase of the company. Uh, 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 right. Um, exploration. Theory. Right. Yeah, exploration, like a book. Right. right. We're at chapter two, chapter three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when we get to chapter eight or chapter nine, then we're talking about uh, raising the capital and mine right. silver yeah, so, and, and, yeah. and for fiat. And the fiat, maybe US dollar, maybe a different form. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the company we are trading at the uh, on the Toronto Stock Exchange, so mm-hmm. it's a graduation from the ventures, and we're over the counter in the United States, the highest tier, uh, OTC fifty. So we're the top fifty volume of all the over the counter. Mm-hmm. In the first two months of this year, we traded almost hundred million shares. Mm-hmm. So it is a very very liquid stock. Mm-hmm. It has a good name on the street, and uh, we have um, as of today, hundred twenty million ounces of silver in the ground, and that's doubled from last year and we were looking to double again from all the expiration efforts. Excellent. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Toronto Stock Exchange, it's E-L-E-F and over the counter uh, is S-I-L-E-F. I'll put that in the description of the video. You know, there's a lot of opportunities for you to invest in different mining companies, but you do want to check out Silver Elephant. You know, I, I tell people that I have four main things that I look for in a mining company. I call it the Yankee Quadrant, all right? <laughs> I should probably, <laughs> I should probably uh, copyright that, but whatever. It's management, the projects, ownership, and financials. Now, I'm not going to ask you to go into depth on all of that, but could you maybe spend 30 seconds on, you know, man, your, you know your management team, uh, you know, the, the projects, very high level, just pick one, because I know there is different locations I was reading about. Uh, ownership do you have you know i love when a company has some you know skin in the game right i mean you, you're yes. you're owning it right uh and you know, it's just how you're doing financially your cash flow and all that so certainly well i'm the larger shoulder i'm the founder of the company i mm-hmm. I, I started with the company at 30 percent and then diluted it down to about just less than 10 yeah so i understand i understand the so my interest is aligned with the shareholders try to minimize dilution sure. we watch our pennies very carefully mm-hmm. the company's financed by some of the most prominent investment bankers in Toronto, Sprott Capital. Eric Sprott is a shareholder, nice. and uh, Mackie and Canaccord and uh, Mackie Research in Canaccord. So wow. we do have a good institution yeah, in retail good. coverage. Yep. And uh, the company is managed by veterans from uh, Barrick, Hecla, mm-hmm. and uh, Plaster Dome and Falcon Bridge. So, so they're some of the pedigreed management. Sure. That's and we're an exploration focused company, so we don't have a lot of people actually mining, but we have nine geologists on staff. Every day, all we think about is how we can maximize the chance of a discovery. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, we do have uh, three silver projects. All of them are in Bolivia. Bolivia had a bit of a checkered past, but that was over 10 years ago. Pendulum has swung in the other way. They're open for, uh, for investments. A number of um, junior companies has made major discoveries. And, uh, the, com- and uh, the, the likes of Sumitomo and uh, Court and Lane and the Pan American Silver, some of the major silver mining companies have been in Bolivia in the last 15 years. Mining companies with a free currency exchange repatriating dividends and profits without issues. So I think um, you know, the companies on up and up I encourage uh, everybody to put, put our tick on, 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 on your radar screen. Definitely. Um, yeah, so you have got some exciting projects going on. I, it, again, this is a speculative play. This is a, a micro cap, guys, penny stock. You know, you got to do your due diligence. Obviously, you know, don't just invest with a uh, silver elephant because you've heard them on Yankee stacking, but I'm very interested in them. I like what they're doing. And uh, I think it's a, it's mostly a silver, not a pure play, but you're focused heavily on silver, correct? Not only that, but we're not focusing on generating cash flow from silver mining, but, but, but to have as much silver in the ground as possible. Mm. And our objective is to have an ounce of silver in the ground for every share of silver elephant. So our ele- wow. right now, you know, right now we have half an ounce, and that w- that would be like fifteen dollars with the silver, uh, you know, thirteen dollars of silver per share, and our shares are trading at fifty cents. Um, and so that that is the goal we strive for. We try it for to to uh, to go for to go for leverage. You know, funny enough, if you look at all of the major shareholders re- from retail, yeah. a lot of the guys, I will tell you their professions. <laughs> you know, it's just interesting, right? Uh, they are lawyer, uh, doctor, pilot. Accountants. So these are but and dentists. Oh, <laughs> a lot of dentists. <laughs> so I think when you get bored of stacking silver, <laughs> silver coins, and just admit getting one a bit of a thrill and thrill, and uh, we know we'll welcome you aboard. We're on the radar of a lot of guys, and mm. I mean we have we're we're a lot of action. So awesome. if you're bored from stacking silver, <laughs> oh, come John, and check us out. John, John, I'm never going to get bored of doing this. <laughs> but I don't have to get bored of this to be interested in uh, getting in on some good action, right? So I, I appreciate it very much. Guys, uh, Silver Elephant Mining, you definitely need to check them out. I'm going to put their links in the description again. Um, and thank you so much, John. This has been a really phenomenal discussion. Oh, Thank it's you. my absolute pleasure. Um, my passion before I started my the, the mining company ten years ago, yeah. as a hobby, but never did I think it was become a full time job. And all of a sudden, ten years later. But before that, as I said, my passion is study markets, currencies, yeah. commodities. So I do have a very active Twitter account. I don't have time to write anymore, but uh, check me out on Twitter, John Lee Silver Elephant, and, go, and just Twitter that you can find. Um, and, uh, you know, I tell the market like it is, and especially the silver market. And right now it's just going to be around 24 to 27 and a half and, uh, treat me and they can hold on, get hold, get hold of me there. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you so much again. I appreciate it, John. Pleasure. Well, again, I hope you enjoyed this really cool interview with John Lee. It won't be the last time after it ended. John said when silver prices get above 27, He wants to come back on Yankee Stacking's channel and talk about what's next. So hopefully that's not going to be too long. But until then, please like and leave a comment below. And as always, I hope your day is a okay.